speaking of Karens, it seems like everyone in the world is offended by everything. My next guest is working on changing that one uncomfortable topic at a time. Death, poverty, her beloved herpes-ridden pet cat. Joining me now in studio, mm -hmm. Gutfeld co-host and author of the brand new book, you can't joke about mm -hmm. that, why everything is funny, nothing is sacred, and we're all in this together. Cat sure Tim joins are. me now. What a wonderful book. Thank you so much. Like you, it, it's so, I was talking to Dana Perino about this today mm -hmm. on my podcast and she said, it's so nice to read a book where you know someone wrote every single word. You're a beautiful writer and the stories are hysterical. Thank you so much. You know, I, again, you list off the things that are in it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be like, that book's gonna be hilarious. But it is because you have to be able to joke about the worst stuff in life or you will literally never get through it. And I mean, you were there for, with me for a lot of this stuff. You were there with me in the hospital for the chapter five. Yeah. <laughs> Which everybody's chapter like, chapter five, Ch buy the book for chapter five for chapter, alone. <laughs> for chapter five alone. You won't, you have to read it to believe it. And I think there's just this misconception that in order to be sensitive to people who are going through tough stuff, mm -hmm. you have to be really careful not to say the wrong thing. But people, can tell that you're that you're worried and uncomfortable. It's so obvious that someone's not treating you the way that they normally would. And it makes you feel so much worse. And and you talk a lot about the decorum police, which yes. you know, you and I discussed when my father passed away, which is how we became close. Because yeah. you had lost your mom the year before yep. and you had gone through it. And what you and I ended up doing and sharing our stories is we laughed at so much stuff yes. which was so helpful. Yes. And you know, there were seeds of your book that had been planted for some time about and, and you make a really good point of this. We don't talk about death enough in our society. And you say, the two things we have in common, we were all born yeah. and we're all gonna die at yes. some point. We don't talk about it. It's so whitewashed. So then you think when someone in your life dies, at least I felt this way, and I know a lot of people I talked to felt this way, you feel like you're doing it wrong. Because in the movies, it's supposed to be so beautiful and you're supposed to have these like beautiful conversations at the end that you carry with you. My mom at the end was like, I'm thirsty, can I get some ice chips? Because she's dying. Mm. And the hospital is like a disgusting place. The only lighting is like, I, I, wrote, I think I wrote this, it's off or have I always been this ugly? <laughs> like you're never as ugly. That was so funny. Yeah. And the keeping people alive machines. The keeping people alive machines are beeping and beeps will happen. And you're like, did someone just, someone's losing. Someone's yeah, losing. Sometimes the machine loses. And sometimes the machine like, loses. You, you think you're not supposed to laugh about right. it. But when you've been through something like that, you're like, my God, I wish we could talk about these yes. things in an honest way. And also, I didn't realize that you became fluent in Spanish when you lived with a Colombian coworker who convinced his family, whom you were also living with, that you were his girlfriend and he kept giving you stolen bracelets. Yes, I wasn't his girlfriend. I did need somewhere to live. So that was a lot of <laughs> awkward conversations, but my Spanish was never better. Like when I, when I have a few drinks, I can get back to being conversational, but I had an immersive experience, very, I'm sure, similar to what kids will have who go to fancy schools and can pay for a semester abroad. I could never afford that. So I had the waitress with no home immersive <laughs> but experience. The, the best was, was you switching waitressing jobs and yes. going from Boston Market to a diner because your tips were better. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. And the day you cried your eyes out yes. and you got the best tips of your life. It was the best tips of my life because <laughs> Cheens' dad, who is now my great friend, but he broke up with me right before my waitressing shift. And it was a four year relationship. He broke up with me via text. So I insisted on going to his brother's house where he was. He Maybe we sat in his car, he wouldn't let me in. He just broke up with me more. You said, yeah, you, you, you sat in the passenger seat and he broke up with you more. more. Oh, and then was... I went to my waitressing job and I cried and I cried. And you know what? I got so many good tips, but that time in my life actually is when I started doing stand up, really. And yeah. I talking about my dumpster fire life on stage, it gave me power over this, these things are making me feel so powerless. Mm -hmm. And Cheens' dad was the only person I really knew out there. So it was also my only means of but connection. But also the, the transcripts of your, your comedy and your early sets, yes. people will absolutely absolutely love that it will it's a bridge from where you were where you started out and where you are now and it's been an incredible journey it's the amazing. book is amazing cat thank you so much thank you thank you so much yes so hold cultural up the book. icon on the back too <laughs> kennedy has her full endorsement fox news cultural, icon. Right, cultural icon we have one and it's she's right there <laughs> oh you're the best by the book <laughs>